But as I put this book together about the city of the of Chicago and the people, people I had interviewed everywhere from Studs Terkel, who, uh, uh, Nick Klein, uh, Royko, who was a good friend of mine, uh, all kind, all kinds of Chicago people, known and unknown. Um, I, th I thought I've, I've got to introduce this in a way to capture both uh, where I'm headed with the entire book and also uh, my sense of, of what this city is all about. Uh, so the prologue is called uh, The Shy town Blues and uh, I'll just read a, a few paragraphs from it to show you what I, what I was getting at. It reflects, too, uh, the fact that I was writing this from here in Door County at the time, and uh, I no longer lived in the city when, when this book came out. When you settled into the quiet of the country, far removed from a life lived and loved in the big city, you experience a period of withdrawal, a homesickness which can last for months or years. Some learn to adjust to the isolation, the slower rhythms of nature, the absence of city sound, city streets, city talk, city people. Others remain out of sorts, out of place. It is not an easy city or an easy juncture. You live at best between places, in exile, never forgetting where you came from, never sure why you left, never certain you will return. There is an hour just before dawn, dawn in the country known as the Blue Hour. It is an hour of incredible emptiness and beauty, desire and despair, an hour of remembering and forgetting, an hour of beginning all over again. And it's the hour I, I often begin to write. In the wee midnight hours, long before the break of day, in the wee midnight, long before the break of day, when the blues creep upon you and carry your mind away, some of my best memories of reading this piece are having a blues band behind me. Or, <laughs> in one case here in Door County, uh, from the, uh, uh, the Peninsula Music uh, Group, a uh, black woman singing blues, singing these lines. I was ready to sit in the audience and listen, but I had to get back up and read. <laughs> I miss Chicago most in October, exiled in Wisconsin the tip of the Door Peninsula, hundreds of miles from home, though only a walk through fields and woods to the edge of the very same lake which touches the city I love and left years ago. I miss the cold October rain, the stiff wind blowing, holding people to a standstill, the water-colored cobalt blue, pained gray, coats and dresses swept away, black umbrellas, red umbrellas, yellow and white, heads lowered into the wind, collars turned, hands holding hats, tugging lapels close to the neck. Words caught in the throat, fragmented and passing conversations, swallowed whole. Taxis, cars, carriages, trains, buses, the smell of exhaust fumes, the movement of people up the street, down the street, across the street, beneath the street, up elevators, down escalators, revolving doors, department stores, the city inhaling, <coughs> exhaling. Catch its beating heart from the Michigan Avenue Bridge. Take it all in, every direction. North up Michigan from the Tribune Tower to the old water tower. The Hancock Building, the Drake, sounds down Michigan to the Art Institute, Orchestra Hall, the Auditorium. East to the Great Lake, along the Chicago River, the Wrigley Building, Wacker Drive, the Sun Times, <coughs> Marina City. The river below you, moving beneath bridges of beauty, of steel lace. Day River, Pea Soup and St. Patrick Day, Green River. Night river of the moon and the stars down there in your eyes. City you can't shake off, that keeps coming back. The river, the bridge, the lake, the loop. The movement through and around, back and forth, back and forth. The recurring dream. City of parks, Lincoln, Grant, Burnham, Jackson. City of architectural awe and arrogance. Of Sullivan's Carson, Peary Scott. Of Wright's never-built mile-high skyscraper. Of Mies van der Rohe's towers of glass of Helen Young, State of Illinois building, launching into the next century. City of museums, of monumental sculpture, old and new, from Loretta Taft and Ivan Mestrovich to Calder, Dubuffet, Oldenburg, Miro, 
and Chicago's own Picasso. Of old movie palaces, the Oriental, the Woods, the McVickers, and the Grand Dame Chicago Theater. City of the Merchandise Mart to Marshall Fields and Maxwell Street. Uptown, Downtown, Crosstown, Old Town, New Town, Chinatown, Greek Town, Nigger Town, Bucktown, Jew Town, ethnic sold enclaves of Scandinavian, Irish, Hispanic, Black, Italian, Yugoslav, Polish, Czech, Native American, Southern White, Lithuanian, Hungarian, Russian, German, and Jew, North Shore, South Shore, North Side, South Side, West Side, Upper Wacker, Lower Wacker, Calumet City, Cook County, Chicago. City of sirens and shouts and whistles and hustlers and horns and newshawks. Salvation Army, Santa's ringing bells, street music, beach waters, foot traffic, fountains, city of corners, State and Randolph, Clark and Van Muren, Madison and Wabash, Washington and Wells, State and Lake, Jackson and Dearborn, Lake and Michigan, State and Madison. The scene, one young man alone, unemployed, envisioning himself a writer, on his way through dark canyons of steel and concrete and glass, the glow from shop windows and street lights illuminate the way he is comfortably hunched inside himself, his own fantasy, hair blowing, pipe burning, hands pocketed, newspapers and books tucked under his arms, plot to find a clean, well other place of his own, downtown Chicago. Character conflict, the insecurity and confidence of youth in pursuit of a grand love affair. Theme, to make an impression, to leave his mark as others have before him. How else will this lady of the night with a heart of gold and eyes so watery blue ever remember him? Well, it's blues in my house from the roof to the ground. Well, it's blues in my house from the roof to the ground. And it's blues everywhere since my good woman left town. Blues in my mailbox cause I can't get no mail. Blues in my mailbox cause I can't get no mail. Say blues in my bread box cause my bread got stale. There's blues in my meal barrel and there's blues upon my shelf and there's blues in my bed cause I'm sleeping by myself. <laughs> he recalls seeing Sandberg like God himself one summer evening walking down Chicago Avenue, where else? In white cap and long white hair, turning the corner on Dearborn, plunking down pennies at the newsstand for a final edition, red streak of the Chicago Daily News. Samberg pausing to jabber with the people in the newsy a while. The old poet, perfectly at home, perfectly in place, still with a feel for the streets. I will be the word of the people Mine will be the bleeding mouth from which the gag is snatched. I will say everything. And seeing him again, once later, on the stage in the Civic Opera House, strumming his guitar, letting loose his lingo, his sing-song voice, I know a Jew fish crier down on Maxwell Street with a voice like a north wind blowing over a corn stall in January. A Chicago Sandbergian opera unto himself. The beating heart, the common tongue of an old poet nearing the end of his time, trying to get his last words in. Goodbye now to the traffic policeman and his whistle, the smash of the iron hoof on the stones, all the crazy, wonderful slamming roar of the streets, Oh, God, there's noises I'm going to be hungry for. The young man, haunted by all this, the power of one writer to define an entire city, the blind alleys, the dark streets, the contrary hearts, the native tongue, the difficulty for anyone to find the words and the way. Yet the journey continues his own rendezvous in the city of steel girders and rivers, elk platforms, billboards of torn posters, the man from Marlboro, the woman in red, flap, flap, flapping in the wind, bare bell, bulbs burning under white metal lampshades, red wiggly spearmint gum machines, green benches, a cluster of iridescent pigeons on the waiting passenger's feet, silver rails and blue-white sparks in the distance, 
memory and desire. Child, boy, man, here comes the L, a lifetime, a lifeline, a one writer's journey to the heart of Chicago.